Hi everyone, I'm Matt Olson, Manager of Restoration Ecology with the Lake County Forest Preserves. And I'm Kelly Schultz, Stewardship Ecologist. We're here to share some tips on how to remove the invasive species, common or European buckthorn, safely and effectively from a home landscape. First off, ensure the plants that you're removing are buckthorn. You can check our website for more resources to help with identification. Late fall through winter is an ideal time for buckthorn removal. We recommend removing fruit-bearing plants first to help stop the spread of buckthorn. From September through November, look for plants with quarter-inch, round, glossy, black-purple berries or fruits. If you can't remove them right away, you can mark the fruit-bearing trees with ribbon, flagging, or a water-based paint. Before you get to work, ensure that you have the appropriate personal protective equipment or PPE. For hand cutting brush, we recommend long pants, long sleeves, closed toed shoes, eye protection, and leather work gloves. For herbiciding, you'll want to upgrade your gloves to chemical resistant ones. And if you're using chainsaws or noisy power tools, then you should also have chaps, hard hats, and hearing protection. In a home landscape, you're most likely going to remove buckthorn with physical or mechanical methods. These involve cutting stems, removing entire plants, or creating a barrier over the plants to smother them. You can pull up small seedlings by hand, or you can cut them with loppers. Loppers can typically handle stems about as big as your thumb. For stems larger than the, your thumb, you're going to need to switch to a saw. For even larger stems, consider using power tools like a chainsaw or reciprocating saw. Whatever you use, cut the stem parallel to the ground to make herbicide application easier later on. PPE and training are essential for any power tool, but especially for chainsaws. Just because anyone can buy a chainsaw does not mean that they should. Chainsaw manufacturers and the big box stores that sell these saws often offer really great training videos you can watch. You can also join our volunteer program. Any volunteer who wants to use power tools, apply herbicide, or burn brush piles needs to complete the appropriate certifications, which we offer for free to registered volunteers aged 18 and up. Learn more at our website at lcfpd.org volunteer. Once you've cut the stems, take steps to reduce the chance that they'll re-sprout. We recommend using products that contain the active ingredient triclopyr. We use these herbicides in the forest preserves and they're the industry standard for our region. Triclopyr herbicides are sold under many different trade names, including Garlon, Element, Tahoe, and other generic products. Before purchasing and using any product, read the entire label. Each product is unique and may contain different active ingredients or may be formulated for different uses. When used properly, herbicides provide effective buckthorn control with potentially less labor and cost than other methods. Hiring a landscaper or ecological contractor for herbicide application and stump grinding is also an option. On our website, you'll find our herbicide quick start guide and another video sharing more important tips on properly obtaining and applying herbicide. Non-chemical treatment options are also available. Buckthorn Baggy is a company that makes plastic bags designed to cover the cut stumps of larger buckthorn. The bag restricts sunlight from reaching the stem, so re-sprouts don't grow. In general, a bag should remain on a stump for one full year to kill the plant and its roots. There's no guarantee, though, that the plant will be dead after one year, so the bag may need to be in place longer. So you've been hard at work battling buckthorn, and what do you do with your brush pile? Well, brush disposal options vary by location, so check with your local municipality and your homeowners association if you have one and your fire department for options. While burning material in brush piles is cost effective, it isn't allowed in all areas. Some communities offer special brush or yard waste pickup days. Others offer brush pickup if you arrange it ahead of time. Some homeowners turn their brush into wood chips themselves or hire a landscaper to do that. We highly suggest understanding your local ordinances and rules, including permits that may be required by your fire department, before removing any plants. If burning cut brush is allowed in your area, we recommend the following. Use caution around other flammable materials, such as dry grass and leaves. Don't burn brush within 25 feet of any structure under or under utility wires or desirable trees. Burn only when winds are slower than 25 miles per hour. Only build brush piles and fires to a size that you can handle, and local restrictions may apply. Always have a water source ready before igniting. We at the Forest Preserves do most of our burning in the winter when snow cover helps to contain fires. Make a contingency plan. Always keep a cell phone on you to call for help if needed and never leave a fire unattended. We hope these tips help with your efforts to battle buckthorn. By managing it on your property, you're helping reduce buckthorn's impacts to forest preserves and natural areas across our entire region. So thank you. Learn more about buckthorn eradication at lcfpd.org buckthorn and follow us on social media at lcfpd. We're also happy to answer buckthorn related questions specific to your property. Please email your questions to healthyhedges at lcfpd.org. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.